Hello and welcome to this ET Now special. I'm Nen Tara Rai. Today we're coming to you from the Seat factory in Halol in Gujarat. I'm here to interview the 35 year old Anand Goenka. He's the son of RPG Group chairman Hush Goenka. Now, Anand Goenka is the managing director of Seat. He may only be 35 years old, but trust me, he's made already quite a mark and is driving Seat tires in the fast lane. for joining Thanks. us here in ET now. Thank you for inviting us to Halol to your factory. Thanks, man. You could have done anything that you wanted. Did you always know that you wanted to join Seat? Uh, I think I always knew that I wanted to at some point uh, join Seat, or at least I had a desire. I didn't know whether I would or not. But I think ever since I was a kid, uh, Seat being the consumer facing part of the group, mm. my perception was always that my dad worked in Seat. Okay. And I didn't understand really what KEC or any of the other companies did because it was much more B2B, etc. So from that perspective, as a young uh, boy onwards, I think my passion and uh, has always been that uh, to see Seat succeed and uh, be a part of Seat. So were you groomed for it as well? How did it work? Not really. I don't think I was ever groomed for any specific uh, role or company as such. Uh, I think it was more a, a regular education a little bit focused towards business. I don't think Kellogg and UPenn uh -huh. is regular education. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but I guess a, a good quality education, but room for any kind of role. I think it would prepare me for any company or uh, any role outside. And then I think the focus post uh, my education uh, was more on skill building. So irrespective of what uh, role I took on, it was more that, okay, how can I gain skills, whether it is in sales, Because you didn't immediately join the family business, if I'm not mistaken, right. when I was reading upon you, is that right? Right. That's so was right. that your idea or your dad's idea? Uh, no, I think I was also keen, both of us. I think it was uh, key that we learned, uh, that I learned how to uh, work in other organizations. In your family business, you're always treated uh, in a different way with additional respect. So I think the kind of experience you would get outside would be very different. So I think I spent some time with Hindustan Lever for me, which was an incredible uh, air, place of learning I mean I from all the way from uh, spending a month month and a half in villages in India to uh, understanding brand and uh, manufacturing I think that was incredible for me okay and then when you joined the family business you didn't first start at CH right I did so my okay. first role was as a territory manager where I was looking at sales in Bombay and Washi region and then over time I grew into taking over half of India and half of Maharashtra in terms of sales, so Jalgaon, etc., some of these areas. So my first role was a sales role, and then I moved on to take on a small uh, unit which was being set up, which was the off-highway tyre business. So, okay. uh, so a couple of roles before I went in for my MBA. Okay, so then when you came back from Kellogg after doing your MBA, right. then you joined Seat again? Then I joined KC International. Okay. So that was our transmission business where I uh, oversaw supply chain uh, as a function. So I looked at uh, production, uh, logistics, planning, um, etc. Some of these it? roles. Uh, I, no, I think I've done that role. I, I enjoyed my time there, but I'm happy uh, now where I am. So, yeah. So now let's talk about Seat. Um, so six years ago, there was clearly a change in strategy to focus more on the high margin two-wheeler business, maybe even passenger vehicles, etc. Was that your idea? Uh, it was again something which we worked uh, as a team. So about in 2010-11, we kind of all got, got together as a management team and said, okay, what will make us proud uh, five years hence? Uh, and that's when we set forward a, a, a kind of a profitability target and a few categories where we want to become leaders in. And that's when we chose uh, the motorcycle segment as one area because we felt that that's going to be a faster growing segment. It is also a segment where we find that people care more about their tire. Usually tire kind of goes into uh, commodity to consumer brand kind of uh, somewhere in the middle out there and some people feel that it's only pricing that matters but we found that in the motorcycle segment people care about the brand and if you are able to offer higher value uh, then you can even charge more for Is the that tire. why you're also investing more in R&D? Out of all the tire companies in India perhaps you're investing the most in R&D? And we've seen a steady increase in that as well. That's right. We've been investing substantially whether in the form of uh, 
partnerships, uh, tying up with universities in India, internationally, uh, professors and scientists all across, uh, partnerships with technology houses. So that's one big area. The other is in infrastructure. So whether it is in, again, testing equipment, we have one of the most unique and uh, few, uh, few test equipments which are there in India. So I think that's uh, something which uh, we've been investing in in a big way in the last few years. And the third is getting the best people on board. So we've got some great, great people, great scientists, again, working on tires, on compounding, coming out with new materials, exploring alternate materials for uh, the best rolling resistance, which is working towards green tires, for tires with the best grip. So each of these but areas... But do you think share, minority on. shareholders might get testy, might get restless, uh, because, you know, they want quick returns? Have you ever had to grapple with that problem? Or are they mature enough to understand this is going to pay dividends going later? No, I think uh, they will look at it in the long term. I don't think, and uh, for me, it's the long term really that matters. So I think that is very core. And I think R&D and marketing are two investments you can't cut down on under any circumstances. Otherwise, you'll suffer later. Yeah. So uh, I think that to us is very core. You're also investing, what, about 700 crore rupees annually. That is the CapEx uh, guidance that has been provided uh, by the company. Are you on track for that with this financial year? Will you cut it down, etc., or what? No, we plan to continue to invest. We don't have a formal uh, system of 700 crore, but we've announced about 2,800 crore of investment over the next five years. I think time. the market has read that but as that's 700 right. crore. That's right. Year. That's right. So that will continue. Uh, it may vary year to year, uh, but we have a routine capital expenditure that we do for upgrading of our plants, for purchase of molds, uh, for IT, etc. And then in addition to that, there can be some lumpy capex which will happen based on plant investments. So, so on average, right if you look at it, it would be somewhere between 500 and 700 okay. per annum. So for the, this financial year that we are in, this is started, yeah. how much can uh, are you planning to invest? Are there any lumpy ones or it's going to be around what you said? So we're going to be uh, looking at a greenfield passenger car facility. Uh, that's going to be requiring a fair amount of expenditure, maybe a couple of hundred crore. Out of nearly a thousand crore investment will go in uh, in this year. Uh, we've just completed our expansion of this plant, which is our Halol facility, so some balanced capex will happen out there. As well as our Nagpur facility, which is a two-wheeler facility, will require, uh, is still under expansion phase and investment phase. So all of this combined would be approximately 500 crore of investment this year. And since you talk about capacity addition, what kind of capacity addition can we expect? So as I said, about uh, 2,800 uh, 2, crore of investment. Uh, this would be, in terms of tons per day, about uh, 500 tons per day kind of uh, investment. If you look at uh, number terms, it varies a lot for tyre, so we usually look at it in the form of tons per day kind of investment. How are the Chinese spoiling your plants? So they have, uh, there has been a fair amount of uh, Chinese tyres getting imported. That's got reduced post... You've all been telling the government that yeah. you need some protection against that. That's they don't right. pay taxes is what your claim is. That's right. That's right. So uh, about nearly 30% of the truck radial market uh, is occupied by Chinese. Post demonetization, that has come down. But we feel that if anti-dumping duty is not imposed, uh, there is a chance of this uh, Chinese imposition uh, or Chinese tires coming back into the market soon. So that's certainly a very large volume. And the prices they're coming in is at about 15 to 20% lower than our pricing. And that economics doesn't add up. So somewhere, I, we believe that there is some element of dumping that is happening. Uh, we are investing a lot in the country in form of employment, in the form of plant, capex. So we feel that we need to uh, be fair. So when you've had market. those series of meetings with the government spearheaded by the Commerce Ministry, how have they panned out? Have you, uh, do you feel that we might see an anti-dumping duty soon? Very difficult to comment on that because I think a decision uh, is still pending. Uh, they have asked us for information, which we've shared with them. We're still waiting for uh, the result. It's been nearly about a year and a half, two years since the time we've applied. How would you react if I was to ask you, okay, you did one price hike in the month of April, if I'm not mistaken, right. but then you denied the consumers a price cut when we saw the collapse of prices, right. of the rubber prices, you denied them that price cut? Right, so if you look at the quantum of price hike that happened, there was a price hike that happened by nearly 25% uh, between October and January time period. That price hike, that cost starts getting felt up with about a quarter, quarter and a half lag. So around April, May or so is when our raw material prices that we are consuming is at its peak. Mm. So to that extent, there's very clear margin erosion that has happened. Prices have come down 
but not to the extent at which prices have come up. Okay. So we've not clearly been able to pass on the price increase that has happened, net of the price reduction also that is happening. So net net, there is still a margin erosion that has happened. Will you maintain the kind of margin that you reported in the fourth quarter? Because you're saying it's going to take a while for it to pan out. So again, I think uh, what will happen is uh, we expect quarter one to be challenging because what is challenging? A, challenging with respect to margin erosion from quarter four. Uh, quarter two, quarter three onwards, I think things should get better in comparison to quarter one. Before we go into a short commercial break, I want to get uh, ask you, if I may say, a cheeky question. You're like neck and neck with JK Tires. Um, why, when do you think you'll become number three? Why, when do you think you'll overtake JK? No, we've not looked at it from that perspective, really. So I really? think we have we have our own uh, kind of targets. Are you thinking about it because no, you're on television? No, I think we have our own targets that we look at. We yeah. look at market shares and growth in uh, our focus areas. And certainly we would be looking at uh, leading in the two-wheeler segment and substantial market share growth. You have a 30% market, market share, share right now. Approximately in the replacement space. So yeah. what do you want to increase that to? If we can go up to uh, being about a at least 35% market share in the two-wheeler space, in the replacement space, that would be good. What about passenger vehicles? Your market share is still less than 10% if I'm not mistaken. It's a little around that level, yeah. that's right. So yeah. what's your target for that? I would say if we can be amongst the top two players in the passenger space in the longer term, that would be great. So you're, you're not looking at the neck-to-neck -neck numbers with JK. Do you have visions of being number one and by when? No, we don't look at it again from a, uh, from a ranking perspective. For us, it's about securing profitability. We don't look at growth. For example, growth is not a long-term metric that we have for ourselves at all. What is growth is important. It's profitability. Profitability. Yeah. So we would much rather be a higher margin, more profitable. Company. So where are you in the pecking order when it comes to pre for profitability? Have you checked that out? Uh, yes, we we do know where we stand. So so globally, we are at around 30, okay. and and we would like to certainly take our ranking up at a global level. To what? What is your target? I'd say certainly in the top 20, if we can be. By when? By then you're 40 or 45. I would say in another five years, seven years time, that would be so good. Then you might have to do inorganic growth as well, no? Possible. Tire industry is relatively small. We know a lot of the players who are there, uh, I mean globally. And so from that perspective, we would look at inorganic only from a very high tech perspective. Again, for us, as I said, growth is not an indicator. If it will substantially increase our profitability and provide synergies, then an acquisition is something we would be open to. Your competitor, Polo, has done it and is always seeming to be scouting. You're not following the same path. No, no, not really. And you'll obviously look at global acquisitions. Again, it's not, we've not taken a, I mean, it really depends on technology. Because I think the balance it, sheet see, is very, very clean. Right. So, so if you, you look at India, score. there are seven companies, eight companies that exist. Yeah. You know what, what's going on. So I don't see any specific major opportunity within India uh, just because there are these handful of players that are yeah. there. So it would be possibly, for, for me what's exciting is on the technology space if we are able to leverage or if there are very clear synergies, if there's some distribution that we can provide or gain uh, and substantially able to make one plus one equal to three, that's what excites us about acquisition, nothing else. Okay, if you can do one plus one equals three, then only will you look that's at right. an acquisition. That's With right. that, time for a short commercial break. Stay tuned to India Inc. 2.0. We'll be back in less than two minutes and continue our conversation with Anand Goenka. Welcome back, you're watching India Inc. 2.0. I'm Nantara Rai. Today we are at Sia Tires factory in Halol in Gujarat and I'm in conversation with the Managing Director, Anand Goenka. Hi Anand. You know, one of the things that I was uh, observing when I was researching for this interview was you have consistently outperformed the Nifty. Do you check out your stock price very often or how many times in a day? Um, I would say usually it's about uh, once a day or so, it does because it's on the alerts, etc. Usually, if there's some big movement that happens, uh, somebody would send a message and then I would kind of check it out. And the returns on the stock are pretty healthy. Yeah. Are you happy? Yes, overall, I've, we've been happy. We've seen good returns, especially last uh, five years, we've seen a big shift uh, mm. with respect to our stock price and market cap. So, do you think that's a thumbs up that you got from the stock market for the shift in strategy of like let's move to the high margin two wheeler business? I think, again, it's a mix of things. One is the industry itself has got re-rated. Yeah. So if you look at all tyre prices, generally have gone well. Yeah. I'd say from uh, Siat's perspective, yes, I think it did reflect clarity of strategy. Uh, performance and results have improved quite substantially. So I think overall things have uh, worked out quite well for the industry as well as uh, for Siat. India's most uh, expensive stock is actually your competitor, MRF. And right. you know, even that stock at 60,000 plus piece 
is able to give pretty good uh, returns. So like you said, is that because the entire industry has been re-rated? That's right. That's right. I think there was a lot of uh, doubt on the industry whether, uh, with respect to, uh, is tyre a segment which is very, uh, whose performance is very dependent on raw material pricing, mm -hmm. movements, etc. So I think some of that, as well as continuous performance by the industry with respect to margins being relatively uh, healthier, has uh, helped in overall share prices coming up. So what are you factoring in for rubber prices? Because that's obviously such an important component when anybody looks at your share price. Right, right. So what are you penciling in for this year? Uh, in terms of rubber pricing, very difficult to predict. So for us, we look at our value addition component or our gross contribution as an area that we would like to maintain is irrespective of rubber prices, whatever happens. Sometimes you're not able to do that just because of competitive environment, etc. Uh, but I'd say rubber prices have now come down to about 120 rupees per kg ex quotation. I don't see any reason why it should go up because overall global economy is not extremely buoyant. Supply side things are positive. Uh, and I'd say one big mover of rubber prices is China. I don't, I'm not very optimistic about uh, any uh, high, higher than expected GDP growth rates in China as well. So everything so, has been factored So net net, I'd say that I th uh, rubber prices would largely be uh, possibly somewhere between 115, 120, going up to maybe 130 kind of range. How's your engagement with the auto companies going? Because that's another strategy that you're focusing on to directly deal with the OEMs. Right, yeah. So for us, our OEM relationships are very important. We, we're there with nearly all the key OEMs in the two-wheeler space. Uh, we supply to uh, Hero, to Honda, to uh, Royal Enfield, uh, Suzuki, etc. On the uh, passenger car space, it's uh, Hyundai, Maruti and all the large OEMs. So for us, that relationship is very important. I think the key is that we learn a lot from them. When they come in to audit our factories, so when they approve us, they need to audit our factories as well. And the kind of learnings that they're able to provide to us from a process improvement perspective, uh, from challenging us with respect to their product quality yeah. requirements are amazing. And that is something we're able to even pass on then to our replacement customers. You know, when I talk, now that you're talking about replacement, you have a market share about 30%, you're probably the largest when it comes to two-wheeler replacement. Uh, but are you now a little um, cautious or a little worried because you have others that have started saying they're going to bet big on this place, whether it's an MRF or a Bridgestone? On the two-wheeler space? Yeah. They said, they've, they said they're going to right, be Right, there have been some announcements. I think there's some time away for capacities to come up. Usually it takes about six, eight months to buy land, another year for capacities to come up, another oh, year to ramp up. Right now. So, no, I'd say for any plant, even if we were to announce whatever we have, it does take two or three years for actual quantums to come into the market. So certainly I think maybe three years, four years, hence there will be competition. At this point of time, competition is still uh, restricted to the incumbent players that have been there. So then how are you going to steal their market share from the passenger vehicles or from the OEMs? Because there they have a first mover advantage. Right. So, uh, oh sorry, no, the previous one I was just uh, to, this yeah. I was talking more about the two-wheeler space. I was as well. And right. now I'm moving on to passenger vehicles, right. where you're trying to increase your market share from, let's say, 9 to 10% to more than that. You have to steal it from them, right? Right. How right. are you going to do that? No, the key is to, uh, for us is, we want to get into the newer models. It's usually difficult to get into the existing models. Okay. Because the only way to get in is through pricing, which is something which we would not uh, resort to, or it would be a last resort kind of an option. But it's rather a situation that we get into the newer models, whichever models, Maruti or Hyundai or any of the other players are kind of coming out with. How can we get in? How can we show our techn technological prowess and kind of win uh, tenders or orders based on that? And then, of course, it's a commercial so have you been negotiation. Beating them? Let's say, have you been beating uh, Bridgestone, MRF, etc., JK, in getting the new OEMs? Uh, we have seen good uh, results with respect to uh, the OEM orders that we are getting on the passenger car side. A lot of this is for the 2018-19 kind of launches that are expected to happen. So we are happy with our movement. Okay. I'm not sure whether we are beating anyone, but I think we are happy with the way we are going. You also focus a lot, and obviously you have to in distribution, but you're doing this, uh, as one brokerage house said, an FMCG-like model. What is that? So what we've done is on the... Dist uh, so the nature of buying tires is quite different across categories. The price of a truck tire is about 15,000 rupees the price of a motorcycle tyre is about 1500 rupees. So what we did was we learned from the FMCG segment and we've kind of adopted a similar kind of a model where we have our distributors yeah. who have their own sub-dealers which are uh, small dealers who in turn sell to the market. So I think that's the model we've adopted. The sub, uh, what helps is that the salespeople therefore are not ours. They're the distributor salespeople who are relatively lower cost 
and they are able to service and go much deeper into the country than our possibly higher cost sales people that say Seat would have. And you like uh, cricket led advertising I see. That's right. So in India, I mean cricket and Bollywood is kind of the two things that work. So for us, we've been always focusing on cricket. We started for example Seat cricket rating in 1996. Uh, so it's been 20 years of plus association of cricket and that's something which has been strongly related with the brand which we've largely been playing up on in the last few years. You've lost, uh, I mean you didn't lose but now MRF has Virat Kohli, do you think that will work against you? Uh, they've had Virat Kohli for some time, yeah. uh, great acquisition or partnership for them but we have Rohit and uh, Ajinkya and Suresh Rena. so let's see, we'll, uh, hopefully they'll... Are you looking to get more ambassadors or this is it for some time? Uh, no, we keep scouting out, so based on uh, whatever fits our uh, budgets, people when as and when they become available, we would certainly look at others as well over time. But let's talk a little bit about your advertising, obviously that's also so important, we've been seeing a steadily increase in that, it's going to continue? Yes, yes, so we, we've been increasing our ad spends say by about at least 20% CAGR over the last uh, 3 to 5 years. And we expect to continue to focus on advertising, whether that level of growth will remain the same, or, but in terms of investments, it will be very high. You came up with a recent ad campaign that I saw on YouTube about um, punctureless tyres. That's right. That's quite a tall claim, isn't it? Yeah, no, so it's a new technology that is there. Okay. So this is a self-sealant technology. You have a glue inside the tyre. When a nail goes inside the tyre, you can just take it out and the glue automatically seals the tyre. So it's a very different technology that we are using. It's, we filed a patent for the technology, so and it is truly it. something you unique. It. Yeah, in the industry. So okay. it's not just a, a, a normal tire which we've done some minor strengthening to or something. It's yeah. clearly a dramatic shift in the technology of that particular tire. The manufacturing process is different. The compounds used is different. So it's it's a pretty large innovation from yeah. a product perspective. Would you say that's the biggest innovation that you've done? Yes, I think certainly with respect to the breakthrough component is one of the biggest innovations. That and will you uh, try to adopt that for passenger vehicles as well? This is for two-wheelers, the ad I saw. Yeah, so we are a little early at this point of time. Uh, we need to first commercialize two-wheeler. We are currently still at pilot stage. We've just launched in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. Hmm. Uh, so once we overcome the, the initial uh, challenges that we may see, uh, we will roll it out on the two-wheeler side first. We've not taken a call on the passenger side for this yet. So as I wrap up this interview, I wanted to ask you uh, one of my final questions. Uh, is there a liability or a huge responsibility being a going car as well? Because you know, you're someone's grandson, someone's father, and therefore you always have that responsibility. And are you good at it? Uh, <laughs> no, I think it's more about uh, making sure that uh, uh, I'm able to just succeed in whatever I'm doing. I, I, I do feel that there is possibly some amount of uh, responsibility. Pressure? But, uh, but I think that's also intrinsic. So I think I internally want to achieve, uh, be successful uh, in whichever way possible. So I think to that extent, it's a mix of uh, the family name that is there. Do you go to your dad well for advice? Who do you go to? Absolutely. So I go to my dad. Uh, I've also uh, had very good mentors in the past. So the former managing director of SEAT, when I was in KEC, the managing director of KEC. Uh, so each, I'd say each boss of mine has really taught me a lot but is it easy to have a dad as a boss? Like, I wouldn't want my dad as a yeah. boss. <laughs> I'm very clear about yeah, it. Yeah. No, I think it's, I, I get fairly well empowered. So I have a lot of freedom in Which what I do. Which is very nice, because yeah. if you see Mr. Harsh Goenka's interviews, if he's ever asked a question about Seat, he'll give a very generic and says, yeah. I think you need to talk to another, which is very nice, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. Certainly, I think that, that certainly helps. And uh, I think there's a fair amount of guidance also that comes in overall strategic. HR are the areas where he gets uh, more involved with respect to certain large capital expenditure approvals with respect to key people appointments are the two areas where he spends a little bit more time. But otherwise, the team is pretty empowered towards taking whatever decision they want. So while you've got this empowerment from Mr. Harsh Goenka, what would you say are the big changes you've introduced at SEA that you're really, really proud of? Uh, I think one big change, in addition to the focus on two-wheeler distribution, I'd say is, our, is we've taken on the business excellence model called total quality management. Uh, towards uh, driving the way we do business. And according to me, that's really improved the health of the organization, all the way from really how we set goals, how our goals are deployed, how improvement activities are looked at. I think all of that has changed quite substantially. So where did you come across this? So when I was in KC, I went for a training program uh, in Japan, in Tokyo. I was there for about 15, 20 days. 
And to me, I'd say that was a time where I really started to appreciate what this means. We visited uh, kind of TQM plants like Toyota, uh, like Hino Motors, uh, Denso. These are companies that have been practicing it for maybe 30 years, 40 oh. years. And with that, thank you so much for inviting us here to Halol, to your factory. We really appreciate you taking the time. No, out. thank you for coming. Thank you. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash etnow.